Today we are going to talk about Twitter post political ideology classification. I'm Qi Wen, and my partners are Han and Si Yi. So I will be talking about introduction and provide some motivation behind our project. The motivation for researching this topic comes from the president election. According to several articles released recently, internet companies can、uh, potentially have the power to influence the, polit- the political ideologies of the public. So we are curious about the chance of supporting. Democrats or Republicans on popular social media, and Twitter is one of the most influential social platforms. Most of,、uh, political organization will use Twitter to broadcast to their audience. Therefore, we decided to change some similar models to classify the、um, political ideologies by using labeled. Twitter post, and these are some related work of our project. And the first paper, the author find the classifier accuracy might change by the、uh, issue agenda or the ideological composition. And in another project, the author also try to classify the political idea. Ologies, but with political speeches. In this paper, they discuss the performance of different models, and we will borrow some experiment from this research to modify our project. Let me introduce our dataset. The dataset we use is from Kaggle. Twitter users were evenly selected from Republicans and Democrats. About 200 tweets were collected from each user. Overall, our dataset contains 84,502 tweets with party labels. Next, let's get into our data pre-processing steps. Here's an example tweet from our raw dataset. We can see some characters that have nothing to do with our classification, such as Twitter handles, punctuations, and digits. So step one is to remove those unnecessary parts. Then, let's tokenize the strings into words. This time, I created a word cloud for each party based on randomized samples. It's clear to see that the words with high frequencies are those informative stop words such as "to" and "of." So we remove those stop words. One thing to notice: there is another stop word that is. Not in our usual stop word library here, which is RT. It appears very often as the beginning string of our collected tweets. After that, we get into the stemming step, which can make the data more dense and reduce the dimension. Here is an example output based on the previous steps. Now we can say that our data is clean. However, we want to get the TF-IDF features. And in order to reduce the operating cost, we want to apply the TF-IDF vectorizer in a pipeline. The parameter requires corpus, so we bring back our tokenized words, and we will redo the tokenization inside that function. That's all for the preparation steps. All right, so let's talk about how we train our models, how we tune the parameters, and how we evaluate the accuracy of our models. So in this section, we're gonna talk about model selection first. We used cross validation to estimate the generalization accuracy of our models, and then we use grid search and random net search for hyperparameter tuning. So the first question is, what are the models we want to test? So based off my research, these models are typically used for text classifications. Which means they all have great potential to yield better outcome in our using scenario. So we decide to try all of them. So let's talk about naive Bayes first. Naive Bayes is a pretty simple model. It has two phases: learning phase and predicting phase. During the learning phase, naive Bayes will be given two type of text, 
and the algorithm will study all of them, every single word. It will show, it will study that how likely is one word to be appeared in a certain type of text. In the second phase, based the learn based the learned information, it will predict it will study every single word in the given text and using this and use this formula to give a prediction of how likely is that given text belongs to one of the classes. Since naive phase is a pretty simple algorithm, we only have one hyperparameter to train in this case, which is alpha. So we run a grid search on alpha. Here is our result. So we notice that when the alpha is equal to one, we have the best outcome. And the second algorithm I want to talk about is actually boost. Actually boost is basically a gradient boost algorithm that can run in parallel. It has a lot of hyperparameters and also is pretty time consuming to train, especially when we use cross validation. So we decide to go with a randomized search. So here you can see the outcome of our randomized search, which gives us a 71.12% of accuracy. During the randomized search, we notice that the deeper the max depth, the better the algorithm perform. So here, after we tuned our model, we run our model on the test data. Here is the result. So naive Bayes and support vector machines gives a pretty good result. Both of them has a 0 0.76 accuracy. And then XGBoost has a lower one, which is 0 0.7. So we notice that cross-validation actually gives a really accurate generalization estimation in this case. And the second thing is naive bias and support vector machines actually tied in accuracy. So the next question we want to ask is which one, which model we want to choose. Therefore, we run a model of comparison using McNamara test. The p-value is pretty powerful, which is 0 0.009. So we deny the possibility that two models are equal. So which one to choose? Since there are no other metrics we're using here, I decided to go with the training time. Naive Bayes is way time saving than support vector machines to train. So this might have some value for the usage in industrial industry. So here we come to the conclusion section. First of all, both support vector machine and naive Bayes give us a pretty decent outcome, which is 76% of accuracy for both. Um, naive base at this point requires less training time than support vector machine, so we think this can be one of the reasons to break the tie between these two models. And second thing is, even our accuracy is not very high in general, only 76% already beat our expectation. The highest score on Kaggle right now is only 73%. Also, uh, they also used uh, naive base as their model. Uh, therefore, we think um, the, the result of this uh, project of ours is uh, acceptable. The second thing is, I want to mention two things that we can improve in the future. First is taking advantage of deep learning. Deep learning nowadays, uh, including recurrent neural network transformer, are largely utilized in um, natural language processing the task like ours. Uh, they are uh, providing some um, impressive outcomes. So basically, it's almost certain we can improve our accuracy by deploying some um, deep learning models. The second thing is we don't have any non-political class at this point. The professor mentioned this issue in our proposal. However, after we did a little bit of research, since our class size, uh, our data size is pretty huge, and uh, we couldn't find non-political tweets uh, at this number. Um, and we also uh, do want to spend a lot of time on labeling data. Um, tens of thousands of data is almost impossible to label for three of us. Uh, therefore, uh, we let it go for now. But in the future, we may add this feature um, if we decide to continue with this project. So thank you everyone for watching. Um, I hope you guys have a good final week. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.